Hey guys, how are we doing? Okay, so if you're new to my channel, my name's Chloe Picard and I release two videos every week on Wednesdays and Saturdays. So today I'm going to be discussing how to date a trans woman. Now I'm going to be covering what not to ask when it comes to our genitalia, how to treat us basically, and a lot of things that you shouldn't do when you're trying to date a trans woman. So the first topic I'd like to cover is how to treat us basically when we're going on dates. If you're the type of person who's too scared to be seen with us out in public, too scared to take us out to dinner or something like that, I do not think you should be dating a trans woman because Obviously you're ashamed of us and we already feel like an outsider and like a lot of our dysphoria kind of kicks in or for me it does when it comes to dating. I don't really feel dysphoria in day to day life but when I'm in the dating game that's when I start to feel dysphoric again because there are a lot of guys out there that are happy to like date us and kind of have us on the side and it's just like it's horrible, you feel like an outcast and you just feel like you're something to be ashamed of. So I'd like to urge any guys out there who are interested in dating trans women but don't want to be seen with them out in public to wait until they're comfortable enough to be seen with us out in public before you start dating us. So I already did cover this sort of before, like when I was pre-op, I had a lot of guys that were interested in seeing me, um, more for hookups and that sort of thing, which, which is fine. Like, like, I don't mind looking up occasionally and like this I remember one guy he wanted me to jump through his window basically to meet up with him and he wanted it to be at a time when none of his flatmates or anything home because he didn't want people to see him see him with me and that was like really confronting for me it was the first time I ever experienced that and it just makes us feel like we're so much less than like what a person should feel like. It's an incredibly horrible feeling and I would just like to steer those particular people away from trying to date us or try to hook up with us because if you don't have the balls to, you know, proudly date us, then, you know, we don't have time for that. We just don't. <laughs> so moving on to genitalia because this is a big thing and a lot of guys ask me a lot of questions about mine. Now, the difference between me and sort of a more average trans woman, I guess, is that I don't mind talking about this sort of thing, obviously. This is kind of my outlet because I, like if you've been watching any of my videos, you'll know that I was silenced at a previous job and then the next job I went into, I was silenced about being trans as well. Now, here is where it's kind of like a gray line a grey line, a thin line, I'm really good at metaphors. <laughs> so it's kind of like a thin line. You can get away with asking about it in the way that there are some guys who preference pre-op trans women, some guys preference trans, uh, post-op trans women, and some don't really mind. Now, the thing with me personally is I would rather get that out of the way and just make it known that I'm post-op. So for me, I don't mind being asked that on um, like a dating site or whatever it is that I'm meeting a guy on because otherwise I'm just going to waste heaps of time into getting to know somebody who then doesn't want to um, take it further, I guess, because, you know, I'm not, I don't have what they want. So... It's a tricky sort of thing to navigate, but I think it is okay to ask a trans woman just that. Are you pre-op or post-op? I don't believe a lot of us, or if any, will have a problem with disclosing that because we all understand that guys have preferences and we don't want to waste our time either because we're not going to try and convince you that what we have underneath all of our clothes is worth investing in. We know that guys will have a type sometimes or most of the time and what I find is the biggest problem for me is that when a guy finds out that I am trans even though I've written like I'm post-op they just completely ignore that or I don't know just don't read it or don't understand it and they they think I'm pre-op and that's really annoying so I kind of have to spell it out to guys if I am dating which I'm not dating at all at the moment so yeah basically wrapping up genitalia wrapping up genitalia um it's okay to ask if you're post-op or pre-op 
we, we won't mind if you ask that question. Just don't start asking questions about us. Like the sort of questions I get are, oh, I've heard that like trans post-op women are really tired and like, you know, and then like it looks like this or it looks like that. And, you know, for me, it's like a, a red flag. Yeah, as soon as, as soon as that sort of thing starts happening because I think, okay, this guy's fetishizing me. So this is like, it's a little bit hard to explain. It's hard for me to even wrap my head around because fetishism and having a preference, they're different things, but often they're perceived as kind of the same thing, even in my brain. Like, I don't really have a type, to be honest, but I do understand that some guys just prefer to be with trans women, which is great for us, honestly, that's a good thing. But when it comes to just being fetishized, that's a totally different thing altogether. And the other thing I want to mention is that I understand the curiosity of the human mind. Like, we are curious creatures in a way like everybody gets curious about things before i transitioned i would be curious about things like post-op and pre-op trans women and like i wonder what it looks like if it looks natural and stuff like that and i really understand that guys are interested in knowing about that because they're curious but if you're seriously interested in the woman that you're speaking to you know just leave it at are you post-op? Are you pre-op? Don't take it any further and um, start going right into asking questions about the genitalia because there's a really good chance that you won't get a second date or even a first date, let alone sleep with them if you do start asking questions like that. Now moving on from genitalia, um, I feel like I can't say that word properly, genitalia. Yeah, there we go. So for the most part, we do just want to be treated like a normal human being. I don't know how to explain this, but when I have gone on dates, um, guys will sometimes just talk about trans related things to us. I find that kind of annoying and a little bit like, I, I wouldn't say annoying, it's a really strong word. I, I get that they're interested and they're probably wanting to show that they understand what we go through and they're an ally of ours, which I respect. I love that actually. But when I go on a date, me being trans is such a small part of me. The other little pearl of wisdom I'd like to shed is um, kind of like knowing more about trans women and how to date them. And obviously if you're watching this video, it's like a really good start. So it's good to kind of be knowledgeable about who you're dating. Like I, for example, I, when I was first transitioning, I thought it would be a really good idea for me to actually try to date a trans man because, you know, obviously trans men would understand sorts of things that I go through. We wouldn't need to like, go over a lot of things and spend a lot of time going over things that like a normal relationship does. Sorry, one of my cats is just acting mental if you can hear anything. How, how this links back is that I never ended up being able to find a trans man, by the way. It's quite a sad story. I matched with the trans man on, like one trans man on Tinder and I was looking for a while and um, he never matched me back. <laughs> what I was doing was I was researching as well. When I was thinking, you know, at that time, the best fit for me would be a trans man, which obviously failed because I couldn't find one. I was researching them and I was watching YouTube videos with trans men in it. And I mean, you're doing the right thing now, but yeah, I was like watching multiple YouTube videos because there's so many different types of us. Like, I can't speak for, for every single trans woman. So yeah, do your research, watch a couple of different sort of trans women speaking about this topic because then you get a broader sense. And if it's just um, pre-op girls, maybe try to search just pre-op girls that you're interested in because then you'll get more of an understanding from them because I don't know much about living pre-op because when I was um, transitioning, um, and I was in that sort of phase, I call it my cocoon phase, because I just kind of shut off from the world until I got my gender confirmation surgery. And I didn't go on one date, I didn't meet up with one guy because I absolutely despise that part of me. And not all pre-op girls are like that. 
you know, I think that they're pre-op for a reason a lot of the time, unless it's because they can't afford the surgery and they really want it, which that sucks. But there's a lot of girls that are really proud of that part of their body. And yeah, just do your research and kind of dip your toe in the water, basically. So really the main takeaway I want to give to you guys is that treat us like a normal woman. Um, normal, I hate using that word, you know, a sort of like how you would treat a cisgendered woman and um, when you're speaking to us ask us about things like if you know if you don't know what to speak about just ask us about what we're interested in so it's not like strictly trans related and you know you never know maybe they'll end up saying you know my interests are going to protests and standing up for like trans rights and stuff like that or they might want to talk about trans related content but trans related content trans related stuff but a lot of the time they just want they're just wanting to talk about normal sort of things like what their hobbies are you know maybe they're really into making candles or they're really like a fitness freak and they love going out and getting on that treadmill for two hours something i can't relate to obviously and yeah like just that sort of stuff like we have the same interests that cisgendered people have so yeah that's all i got to say really from this video um leave a comment and tell me how you're doing and if you want to find out anything else or you've got any suggestions about the videos you want me to make, definitely leave a comment about that as well because I want to make content that you guys are interested in. And don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you feel like it. No pressure, but I would really love it if you did subscribe. All right, thank you so much for watching again, guys. Catch you later. Bye.